Okay, I think we are live twice in one day. What's even happening? Okay, so this primer is all dry and you can see, uh, you can see, you can't see it. It's clear, clear primer. I left the link for all of that and the paint I'm going to use up in the description. So that should be there this time. <laughs> um, if you can see me and hear me, let me know. I am going to use, I think, I have a couple colors here, so I wanna open this and see. Um, I'm just looking at the other colors here I have on the floor. So I'm going to use, is that backwards for you guys? It's called limestone. I have not used this color before, so I'm going to try this color. And I did shake it. Okay, sorry, okay. Whoops, I didn't have the. So I have one coat of the clear primer on this. I shared how I sanded it before that. The moment of truth. This is always it. Ooh, so it almost looks, this help if I, it looks white kind of in the camera, but it is a real, I don't know if you guys can tell. It's kind of like a pale, pale gray. I don't know if you guys can tell. And look at how much paint is in here. So I am going to use my Klingon brush. Yes, I'm going to use my Klingon brush for this. So this brush you can get from Wise Owl as well. Again, the link is in the description. And uh, so it's kind of, I've, I've shared this before. I did not think I was going to like this brush because it's so, it's thicker. Uh, this part, the, where the bristles are, it's thicker. Um, ooh, this is gonna be good. So, uh, but I love this brush. Okay, let's just be completely honest. I just wanted to get the paint on this because I just hope, well, you, I kind of covered that. It's just, Already, you can see the difference that the paint is going to make in this area alone. It just, this, the curves here and the details that it has on it, it's just going to bring those out. Like they're just going to be, they're going to be a feature or a, of the piece rather than just kind of blending away with that real dark brown color. I don't, I, does it look? I don't know, it's not white. It is definitely more of a lightish gray color. I don't know if you'll be able to tell through the camera. But now this piece, so I got this question, I can't remember, let me kind of move you guys a little bit. Um, I can't remember, maybe it was when I was sharing that piece, I just sold the green, kind of the green gray color with the drawers. Somebody asked, can you paint over dark furniture with light colored paint? Yes. <laughs> um, I can't remember if it was here or on Instagram, but I always say if one person has a question, at least three other people have that same question. So yes, and especially with the way that uh, paint, how far paint for furniture has come. When I, like I, when I, when I first started this, I was using wall paint. <laughs> so, uh, that didn't seem to cover as well. Not saying it's not doable at all. I just think paint in general has come such a long way. So, uh, but yes, yeah, so you definitely can. I would recommend like a stain, a primer, um, a stain blocking primer or a regular primer. Uh, but it just may take a couple more coats. So if you can see the paint here and I am brushing, uh, it's not covering 100% perfectly well. And I will have people reach out or send me uh, photos of this. Like it'll be like this and they'll send me photos and they'll just say, it's not working. It is, this is how it works. This is part of the process. This is working. <laughs> it just is going to take a couple more coats uh, and definitely do not judge it with this first coat because even if this was a real light piece underneath and I was doing a light color, uh, same thing. Just don't, don't, don't give your, don't quit with this, with the first coat. Um, and then, 
So this first coat is almost like your second primer coat, kind of. Think of it that way. And then maybe you won't get as frustrated, but it's just kind of your initial bit of color you have to put on there, kind of prime it and get ready for the second and sometimes third coat. Um, but if you can see, like I've already covered this much, I'm not even using that much paint. I mean, at all. You're not gonna use a ton of paint. Uh, so don't, another, another mistake is do not uh, put on a ton of paint because you wanna try and cover it in one coat. Don't do that because not only is it, it, it just, the finish won't look good. Uh, you will have a ton of brush strokes. Um, and then I will show you, this paint's going on okay. Hang on one second. I will show you another little trick. If you are, if you are brushing, brushing paint. I'm just trying to answer questions that I know people have asked before. So, <clears throat> especially for a little, a little piece like this, I, I, we, ha we do spray. We have sprayed pieces of furniture before. It's very efficient. It, it works really well. But uh, for a small piece like this, it's, I mean, you have to do, you, you've got to clean it out, set it up. Um, and again, I've shared here on Instagram that sometimes me, like I just got done writing some stuff for the website and then sometimes me just having a paintbrush, a can of paint, and this is just like therapy. So I definitely wouldn't wanna get out. If I had multiple pieces out, I would spray it. So people will ask me if I ever spray. Have done it. Um, it's like, it's good, it's great, but for something when I just have a small piece like this, I will use a brush. So at this point, I kind of have a layer on top of here. Uh, and you can see some places are covered more than others. I do not want to put any extra paint on here to cover it better like it looks here because right now it's starting to dry. So even if I put my um, brush in the paint and I start doing this, I'm gonna be pulling paint that's already on there off. And then, so you're gonna have like clumps of paint as it's drying, it's just, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Just let it go. You're gonna have to do another coat. Um, so just leave it at this point and just move on to the legs or whatever. Uh, brush strokes, uh, there's, I wrote a blog post so you can check out mycreativedays.com on how to get rid of brush strokes. Um, one of the biggest things is just don't put so much paint on your paintbrush. Again, this is a process, especially when you're covering uh, over, I'll share this in just a minute, over a dark color, you just, you got it. You just know you got to work in layers. So that is probably my number one. Do not load your paint up because you will have. And as you do this more and more and more, it's just going to become second nature. You understand how the piece is. You'll understand. Okay, that was way too much paint. Like you will. It it will become second nature. Uh, but another thing you can do, and uh, uh, along with the toothbrush, I shared this morning. <laughs> um. Does anybody remember tooth? Speaking of tooth, my mom, I mean, she always had an old toothbrush in her like cleaning supplies. I mean, back in the day, it was vinegar and water, old new, like newspapers for cleaning the windows. Did anybody else's mom do that? My mom would spray the window with vinegar and water, and then she would use newspapers to wipe it off because there were no streaks then. I don't know. And the toothbrush, it just, it's those simple things. <laughs> Have those in your painting caddy just because... Um, you'll just use them from time to time. So another way, and like on this coat, I didn't really need it. So some of the chalk paints, paints are thick. And so um, that is how you, and especially if you're putting way too much on your piece at first, um, that is how and why you will get brush strokes. So you need to invest in one of these. <laughs> A continuous spray bottle will be your best friend when you're painting, especially with a brush, because it's gonna help you thin out the paint kind of as you're working and it'll get rid of the brush strokes. It just won't be as thick. So how I do it is, again, every piece is different. 
Uh, but I will just, I'm trying to make sure I'm in the, I will just spray, you know, a little bit on the end of my brush before I dip it into, let me turn this around so it's easier for you guys to see. Before I dip it into the paint, that is my, my floor is kind of creaky. Um, let me just kind of do it this way. Can you guys see that then? And then I just need to situate myself. <laughs> okay, so then that's what I do. I kind of just spray the end of my brush and then I will put my brush just in the paint. And that just kind of um, helps thin out the paint and just helps you move the paint. Uh, you can sometimes tell, that somebody's just knocking on my off. Uh, you can sometimes tell when you are doing a, a uh, piece of furniture and when you're, the paint is, it's like harder to push if that makes sense. Then you just kind of know it's too thick and you will probably get some brush strokes. So see, this Klingon brush is perfect <laughs> for these, for these uh, spindles and these curves. And this is a good brush. Uh, you can get it through the link I left in the description. And I, like I said, I'm just wowed by this. I did not think I would like it at all. Um, but anyway, the water will just help kind of, I wish I could illustrate or like show you what I mean by having to push harder. It's just like you can tell it's getting thicker, if that makes sense. And then the water will just um, help thin that out. Okay. And then I just stuck my hand right there. I thought I had my hand under there. <laughs> okay. Another way you can use the... Um, did you see that? That's why I have to have paint clothes on. If I don't, here, I'm going to see if I can, I will have paint everywhere. And I always think I'll never get paint on me. Let me just go down and paint this little table and there will not be any paint on me. Never. I have to always wear paint clothes. Um, okay. So here, uh, this is probably not going to work. So as I am working on some pieces, I will get like this paint on and it was, I didn't feel like it was too thick here. But as I'm working on it it, it, it may get harder. So I have just squirted a little bit of water just right on the piece itself and then just work that paint. If you get it too soaked with the water, it's going to almost... This is moving because the towel's all bunched up. Um, it will almost be like you're staining the piece because it's going to become so watery. Does that make sense? So you, it's just a little, a little bit of paint goes, or water goes a long way. The continuous spray bottles uh, are just so much better than a regular spray bottle because you don't have that harsh just squirt in like one area. The continuous spray bottle, it kind of, I don't know, you're not probably gonna be able to see that. It just kind of goes, it's like a mist instead of a squirt, if that, if that makes sense, I hope it does. And that's just, so I would recommend those uh, for sure. And I can, you can find those, they're really inexpensive. I get mine, this one, uh, it's just through my Chalk Couture website, so they had them there, so that's how I got this one. And that's why it's this color. People will say, where do I find that color? You can definitely get one through my, my shop page there, but you can find them. I, I sent people just on Amazon, links on Amazon um, as well for the ones I like there. So yeah, so let me see. If you have any questions, let me know. If this these kinds of videos are helpful, please share them. I would love to help as many people as I can and just, um, so something like, can you see that what I'm doing? Okay. So something like this, where I'm, I've got a lot of spindles, I probably wouldn't spray this. So if I need water, I would just spray my brush a little bit. Um, and when you're, how can I explain this? When you're working in little areas like this that have a lot of curves or a lot of crevices, right after you, you put your paint on your brush, 
See if you can spread it out. If you've got another area where you can kind of spread it out a little bit before just putting it on here, just because you don't want it to glob up and uh, have too much paint in these hard to reach crevices, which again, if that happens, it's fine, totally fixable, but just it'll save you a lot of time and effort. Uh, does that make sense? So then it's not like so much paint in one area and you're having to find a tiny sander to get in a small tiny area because you have way too much paint in a hard to reach area. So just kind of spread it out on a flat surface first and then go back and do your curvy areas. Okay. I got done with my, I did not know if I would come back on today. I got done with my writing stuff and I thought, I'd really like to get, <laughs> I want to at least get the first coat on this just because I'm somebody that if I've got a project, I want to get it done. I don't want it to sit for too long because hopefully I'm finding more and more projects. And so I always want to make room for the new projects. Again, do not get upset at this stage. It needs another coat for sure. And I may distress this one just because it's it's got that dark, dark color underneath. Okay, let me see if there are any other, I think there's somebody trying to get in or to see if I'm live or talking to somebody. <clears throat> okay, are there any questions? I don't think anybody's asked a question, so that I'm always like, is somebody, oh, here, okay. Yeah, it is a pretty color. It's kind of, can you guys tell, it's kind of, it doesn't look, maybe it looks completely white here, but it's definitely, you can see, it, somebody said this is backwards, sorry. Um, it's, you can kind of see the white label and the color, kind of a really light, light gray. Heidi, it is Wise Owl Paint. I left the link up above so you can check it out. The color name is Limestone. So <laughs> it's backwards when I do that. I did not flip the, whoops. It's, it's, it's Limestone. I know it's backwards. Sorry, guys. It's Wise Owl Paint. I'm really liking their paints. Let me just flip this over one more time. Do you have any questions? I won't do this whole thing on here live with you guys. I just wanted to kind of share the process and how I do this. And sometimes when I feel <clears throat> if my brush, like a piece is kind of taking me a while, you know, I've kind of got a bigger piece or it's just like my brush has been out for a while. Uh, it helps to have it to just mist it a little bit with the water. Uh, just so it doesn't dry out um, and leave. You just want it working <laughs> the entire time uh, that you're working on your piece. So another thing, I've shared this before too. So when any on any piece, so this could be on a dresser, a buffet, a hutch, anything. So right here, I am coming from this side, right? So I'm brushing here and I'm ending up over here. I cannot see this edge from where I am sitting. So you always want to just, it's just a quick, just a quick swipe up on the edges, any of your edges here. So sometimes like if I have a taller piece, a hutch or something, and I'm down below, like I'm down here working on the legs and I come here up on the side. So then I can't see this top ledge. So as I'm working, I just want a, a quick soft swipe so then you don't get a, you know, a bead of paint on these edges on the opposite side of where you're working, if that makes sense. Again, totally fixable. You can sand them down, but just remembering and getting in that habit will, uh, will just, it's just going to be less work for you and less frustration. So, and I've learned the hard way. <laughs> I think I get a piece totally done and then I stand up or I'm, you know, I kind of walk away from it and then I come back and all my edges have like a, when I say bead, but you know what I mean? A, a bead of thick paint around the edges that I now need to go sand 
and then touch up. <laughs> and so it's just, just save yourself that frustration and that extra work. Okay, let me see. I miss the color. Okay, so I got limestone is the name. Marilyn, what is the type of brush that you're using? This is called a Klingon brush. Uh, I, I love this thing. I did not think I would. Again, you can get it from Wise Owl. This is the shorter one. It's kind of a thicker. And then I just got this one. This one has a lot longer uh, uh, handle and it's smaller. So I'm excited to try this one. But this little one, I have smaller hands, and so these little brushes, I, I just, they just help. <laughs> they help, so I really like this one. Is that like the paste you get from Chalk Couture? Nope, this is totally chalk um, uh, paint. My gosh, I'm sorry. The chalk paste from Chalk Couture that's just when like I'm making signs or those things. That's actually just chalk paste. These are two different things. What I was, I just, but I got the, um, the fine mister thing was from my shop, my chalk tour shop. They have, I have a fine mister spray bottle in the shop. So this is the one I had and this is the one I use. Okay, love wise owl and zebra products. Thanks to you. I'm so glad me too. I love sharing the things that they really have, you know, I could go on and on about good paint brushes and good paint um, because I spent so many years just trying to get by, you know, as inexpensive as I could and like, but once I started investing in these other things, I'm telling you, it made the biggest difference less frustration. <laughs> I got done quicker. Uh, the, the, pro, like the paint going on with the better brushes was just it, night and day, night and day. So if I could give you a piece of advice, that would be to invest in some great brushes and take care of them and use the products that are, um, made for the, like, you know, projects like this. The furniture paints, the chalk paints and things that are out there, I'm telling you, it'll just make your, your projects and your sanity that much better. I'm sitting on a pair of scissors. <laughs> that was not comfortable. Okay, okay. I think that's, that's all the questions I can see right now. If you come on later or if you think of something later, let me know. Come back on and leave it in the comments and I will check back with these later. I'm just going to finish this, uh, this first coat. I will let it sit for hours. People have asked me, how long do you let it sit? Um, at least a few hours. It, I mean, it doesn't need, and some paint brands, always check with the paint brands you're using. They have a uh, kind of, you know, what, what they recommend. So always check that. But in a couple hours, this will be dry and I can put on a second coat and then uh, a light sanding in between the coats is always good. It's another question I will get. And by light sanding, I mean like a 320 grit sandpaper. And you are literally, it should take three minutes, five minutes if you have a bigger piece. You are, you're not trying to like, you know, get down to the bare wood or anything. You're just trying to smooth out the surface. So that's the only thing you're doing with the light sanding in between coats and then uh, like before you would put on a top coat, which I will definitely put on a top coat on this piece. And I can, let's we'll see how this goes. The kids, it's their last kind of summer day. So I was thinking about taking them to lunch and everything. So uh, we'll see, maybe I'll come back on and kind of tell you, show you through the rest of this process, how I do it. So, okay, if you have any questions, let me know. I think this is the last time I'll be live on here today. <laughs> I can't promise anything, but two lives in one day. Uh, I haven't done that in a long time. So 
Okay, guys, have a good weekend. Have a good Friday. If you have any questions, let me know. I left links up above to the products I'm using and also our wait list for our furniture flipping course that we are launching on September 8th. I kind of talked about it this morning. So if you have any questions, you can check out um, this morning's live when I um, was uh, priming this. I kind of talked about it in there. So I won't go over it again here. But okay, guys, have a great day and I will talk to you soon.